All right, today I'm discussing the pros and cons of both fixed bridges and blocked double locking floating tremolos on electric guitar. So things like hip shot or maybe the Ibanez brand style or whatever brand style bridge comes with it. And then on the double locking side, like a Floyd Rose or an Ibanez Low Pro or an Ibanez Edge, things like that. Why might you want one or the other? Why would you block a perfectly good bridge? Now, before I jump in, I just got to say I'm not sponsored by any of the brands shown in this video. I'm also not some amazing guitar virtuoso or anything. I'm just some guy on the internet who clearly likes guitars, as you can see. I do the YouTube thing. I make music online and put it in videos and on streaming services. So let's jump right in. First of all, what is a fixed bridge? You have basically an uncomplicated piece of metal, no springs or anything like that. The strings will go either through the body or through the bridge. And then over here on the headstock, there's no locking mechanisms or anything. There's just a typical guitar nut. So as mentioned, these are like a hip shot style bridge, whatever comes on a guitar here, like the stock Ibanez bridge, uh, the tunematic bridges to like typically on the Les Paul style guitars. And now what is a, a double locking bridge? Well, you can think of like a Floyd Rose, one of the Ibanez bridges, anything that'll have the spring system in the back fighting against the tension of the strings. But in the context of this video, we're talking about when these are blocked right here. So you can block them with pieces of wood. You can screw in pieces of metal. You can use a bunch of guitar picks. You can tape a bunch of guitar picks together just to block the bridge from moving like up or down, dive bombing, pulling up. You still have the fine tuners. You still have the locking nut in place. So in the context of this video, this is what I'm talking about. So what are the advantages of a fixed bridge on an electric guitar? Well, first of all, it's super easy to restring. Even if you have the bridge blocked on the double locking system, you still have to futz with the nut and then you have to unlock the string down here at the bridge. But on a fixed bridge, you just have to feed the string through. In this particular case, you just feed the string through the hole, get the string out through here, and then just get it through the nut slot into the tuning head and then turn and you're done. Not all of us are guitar technicians, so if changing your strings is, I don't know, difficult, maybe you're a newer guitarist, some people have trouble with that at first. We all gotta start somewhere, we all gotta learn. A system like this is nice and simple, not gonna have any issues with that. Another advantage of the fixed bridge system is that you can change tunings on the fly if you want. Of course you're limited by your string gauge, so if you're tuning down super far and you don't change the strings for a thicker gauge, they're gonna get all floppy, that's just physics. But say you're in standard and you want to go to drop D, or if you're in D standard and you want to go to drop C, you can easily just down tune the whole step on your bass string. And you're not going to have to futz with the equilibrium of the bridge or anything. You just retune and you're done. Or maybe you want to switch to an open tuning real quick. You can just go ahead and do that. And again, you won't have to mess with the bridge at all. It's just ready. That'll definitely save you having to bring an extra guitar. It's also great to learn how to set up the bridge too. You don't have to worry about tension equilibrium or anything like that. You just get the proper fitting tool and you can adjust the intonation and the, the string, the saddle height, super simple stuff. And then once you learn those fundamentals, you can transfer that, those, those concepts to then maybe you get a guitar that does have the double locking, the floating bridge or some other kind of bridge. You'll generally know what you need to do. You'll think, okay, well, I need to change the intonation. Maybe it's a little different on this other bridge, but I understand I need to be moving the saddle forward or back. And speaking of tools, you won't need any tools to do any kind of emergency tuning changes. So of course with the fixed bridge, you just turn the tuning head on the headstock right here. So if you need to make any tuning adjustments on the fly, you're not gonna be limited by any fine tuners bottoming out. You could just tighten it or loosen it as much as you want. Of course, also in terms of things failing, because it's a simple system, there's gonna be less things to fail. You're not gonna have any knife edges coming out you're not gonna have any locking nuts coming loose. You won't have any of the screws holding in the locking nut come loose. It's just string through the bridge, through the nut, into the tuning head, easy. You also won't have to worry about any sympathetic vibrations of any springs, like equilibrium springs um, in here, because it doesn't exist. Of course, it is a simple fix to deaden those springs. You just stick a tissue in or something. It's what I do. I don't know if you could see it, but I just put a tissue in there and that stops the vibration. Or you could take off the cover and have your clothes dead in the springs. They also sell springs that do have a coating or a rubber thing around it to stop vibrations. But anyway, we're getting off topic. 
Of course, you might prefer how the particular bridge feels, whether it's the hip shot or, or this Ibanez bridge here. You just might like how it feels. It might be what you're used to. And there's nothing wrong with that. These are tools to get a job done. You know, we're making music and we all have different preferences. We prefer different things. So it's important to pick the right tool for the job you're doing for you. And of course, because there's no springs or any metal tone blocks or anything in the back, you don't have the weight of that system in the guitar. So of course it depends on the construction of the guitar, what it's made of, all that stuff, but you won't have any of the heavy components in it. All right, now let's talk about the advantages of if you block a double locking system, like this Low Pro right here. Now this is gonna be ultra stable. These are designed to hold strings in tune when you're you know, wailing on the whammy bar, going up and down, really putting the springs to the test and this is meant to stay in tune when you're doing that. So when you hold this in place completely, you're <laughs> stopping it from going crazy. So you have all the components that hold the string in place and you've eliminated one of the big things that would disrupt that. So there's gonna be no movement of the string here and you're also not gonna have the string binding at the nut because it's locked down. Of course, that means you can't do the, the kind of bending behind the nut thing. So I guess that's another pro for the fixed bridge, if that's what you're trying to do. Of course, you may prefer the feel of this bridge system. Personally, I do. And with this setup, you'll have access to the fine tuners. So if you need to make minute tuning adjustments, maybe you're just a little bit out of tune and you don't want to do that thing where you turn the tuning head and then you're too out of tune the other way. So then you got to keep fussing with it. Um, no, you'll just have the fine tuners and you can do that pretty easily. Not saying you can't make small adjustments with the tuning head so i guess this is a, a just a pretty nice little bonus feature and then of course i did mention that the system has some weight to it all the components in here have the weight to it and depending on the guitar it might balance better this guitar balances just fine and so does this one but i have an s an axiom label s and it has a fixed bridge and i used to own a few other s's and those had the um trim systems in them and my axiom label doesn't and it's actually kind of neck heavy because there's no weight to counterbalance just the neck. So that guitar actually would benefit from just some, either put some weights in it or having the weight of the trim system. And of course, another advantage of the blocked trim system is that you can always unblock it and you can use the trim system. You can use the dive bombs, this, the pull up squeals, all that kind of stuff, the shaky vibrato all the tremolo action fun. You can unblock the system and enjoy all that. And when you're done doing that and you wanna go back to the blocked system, just reinstall the block. So what are my overall thoughts? Which of these do I prefer? Well, obviously I like them both because I bought them both. These are both my guitars, but that's a super safe answer. You probably wanna know which one I would prefer. And I prefer the block tram system. And the number one reason why I prefer that is because of the feel. I like the stability of the double locking system, especially after the block. Having the fine tuners is nice because usually I'm doing just small tuning adjustments. This is because especially when I'm recording, I do check the tuning every now and then after every handful of takes or so just to make sure I'm in tune. Of course, the fixed bridges simplicity does speak to me. I do like how there's less on here that can fail. And again, with either one of these, I do check the tuning every now and then. If I'm at like a live jam session or something like that, I do use the tuning pedal. But even though I do that, I do still prefer the stability of this and the advantage of not binding at the nut under any circumstances. I know there's things you can do to the guitar nut. You can lubricate it, stuff like that. And that's fair. And I'm also not saying that the fixed bridge system feels bad. If anything, through my guitar playing experience, I have played more guitars with uh, the double locking bridge system just overwhelmingly that's been the system I'm used to. So that probably also has some kind of role in this decision too. And of course, double locking systems can still fail, maybe from user error. Maybe I didn't tighten one of the locks just right either at the bridge. Maybe I didn't tighten the nut down fully all the way. Maybe I go from a hot room to a cold room, hot place to a cold place. Maybe the weather shifts. It's really maybe hot during the day and then much cooler at night. And through some circumstances, I might need to retune the guitar more than what the fine tuners can give. That would definitely be a drawback of this. But for what I'm doing right now, that doesn't happen all that often. I'm primarily recording at home. So which one would I recommend for you? Fixed bridge or blocked bridge or, or what? Well, definitely find something you like the feel of. 
Find something that will match your, I guess, guitar tech skill. If you've never ever played or worked with a double locking system before, maybe think twice about getting one. I'm not saying don't do it. Of course it can be learned. If I can learn it, you can learn it. If I can block it, you can block it. But also consider the simplicity of the fix bridge. So find something you like the feel of. Find something that'll match your guitar or tech skill to a degree. And find something that'll stay in tune for your needs. Of course, on your guitar hunt, you might find the perfect guitar, but it just has a different style bridge than what you want. And in the case of it having a floating bridge and you want a fixed bridge, maybe blocking the bridge is right for you. So there you have it. These are my thoughts. Do you have any other questions or ideas or comments? Did I miss something? Let me know down in the comment section below. You know this is YouTube, so I have to say the YouTube things, okay? Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share the video, print out every frame and mail it. And as always, peace.